One of our viewers asked for Carr's supremely delicious mango list. So he actually had to work on that because there are so many varieties of mangoes that he really likes a lot. Uh, but he has gotten that list for us today. Uh, keep in mind that uh, everybody tastes things differently, so Har's list might not be the same as your list. And also, uh, mangoes can vary uh, from year to year, the taste of a mango, and also from grove to grove. So keep an open mind, but this is a great start on what mango varieties are really good. Here's Har. Good afternoon. For this supremely delicious mango list, I'm looking for the really powerful flavors that I think most people will like. Doesn't mean everybody, but more than half of you will really like these and agree that they're very rich and powerfully flavored. Uh, hopefully without uh, turning anybody off. There's one controversial one on there. I'll mention that last. Uh, that is a love it or hate it one. But I've got to keep it on my list. Let's start with Fruit Punch. What we're standing by. It's one of the relatively new hybrids. Uh, produced by Gary Zill at Zill High Performance Plants. It has a wonderful mix of flavors. Spicy, sweet, tart, a, a touch of resin. I like resin so when I include that in a description it's good for me. Uh, the fruit is large, good texture, usually a beautiful color. The tree is a, a medium to sometimes heavy producer. The fruit are mostly held out where they're easy to see, easy to pick. So I like pretty much everything about this tree. And I even like to eat the skin. Some of you know that I like to eat the skins of some mangoes. Next on the list is Jakarta. It's one of the older varieties from Zill Nursery, the old Zill Nursery, uh, Lawrence Zill's time. Uh, Jakarta is descended from the Bombay and probably from the Kent. Once again, it's a very nice mix of sweet and tart spicy resin uh, just hard to beat it used to be one of miss chris wenzel's favorites is it still number one i don't have a number one but or i have a lot of number ones yeah <laughs> yeah uh, jakarta produces pretty well here in this grove and many other locations it's less productive but if you have room for several trees, uh, I certainly wouldn't leave it off my planting list. The skin of the Jakarta is usually beautiful, has a strange mix of colors. It does give me a little bit of a hard time to pick it because I have some color perception issues. Uh, it has yellow on it before it's ready. Uh, with most of the fruit we look for yellow as the sign of being ready to pick. But the Jakarta will fool me. So I usually let Miss Chris pick the Jakarta. She has a much better eye for them. Uh, next on the list is another relatively new uh, hybrid from Zills done about the same time as the fruit punch. That is the Kathy, uh, which we called K3. That's from row K, number three, three in the row. Uh, it's a Southeast Asian uh, type 
um, mango. Uh, a very smooth, sweet flavor. Uh, not the spicy touches to it like uh, fruit punch or Jakarta. I think pretty much everyone uh, would like Kathy because uh, it doesn't have any of those strong flavors and yet it's rich and sweet. Uh, it's mid-season and often actually starts before the end of early season and goes into the start of late season. A really long season tree which is a nice thing in a yard. Next on the list is lemon zest descended from the Popukalai which is the nickname of lemon meringue. I like the lemon ring a lot, but the lemon zest I like even better. The lemon ring, however, produces more and in wetter situations out near the swamps. But lemon zest, if you're living near the coast in a nice dry situation, uh, does very well, especially if you spray it. Uh, spray it with copper. Uh, against some of the skin disease problems that are showing up. I also check the fruit for mango bacterial black spot while the fruit is young. When it shows up on any fruit, I take those fruit off. Uh, that way most of the crop stays clean. Uh, lemon zest is a, a very upright vigorous growing tree. Uh, you need a good long picker in most cases. Next on the list is M4. Still has not received a romantic name. Uh, just the row letter and the number of tree in the row. The fourth tree in the M row. It's descended from Kit it's a late season mango, not quite as late as Kit. It's a heavy producer at least every other year. Some years it could pr produce a light crop or very little crop. But in its on year it produces a lot. The fruit are nowhere near the huge size of Kit uh, the M4 fruit are kind of small. But this was actually the first variety that I coined the description supremely delicious for. Because of its alternate bearing habit, uh, at least the original tree, it wasn't being pushed early on. And when I tried it, I said, this is too good to leave off the list ought to be propagated. Uh, eventually with other people's arguments for it as well, it's been produced. Next on the list is a late season variety called Orange Essence. Don't confound this with Orange Sherbet. They have no relation to each other other than people noticing that they have an orange aroma near the skin. The orange essence produces very heavily uh, in the first part of the late season. The texture is wonderful. The, the flavor is rich, sweet, spicy with that orange peel aroma near the skin and this is another one that I must eat the skin on and I get the full punch of the orange essence that way. This is another wonderful variety from Thailand that many of us consider to be supremely delicious. This is the Pram Kai Mea. 
which translates as uh, temple person trade wife for one of these. <laughs> Maybe not just one of them, for bushels of them, I suppose. <laughs> The Pram Kaimea is eaten at any stage of ripeness. Usually people wait till they get bigger than this, so let it grow a little more. But they're great, green, crunchy, and when they hang on the tree for a long time, even after being fully ripe, uh, they get a red carrot color inside and a very uh, delicate, sweet flavor all its own. And last on the list, actually first in alphabetical order, but I left it for last, is the carry. The carry is more controversial. You read some of the mango connoisseurs' comments. Some don't like it at all, but it's near the top of my list and judging by the number of customers who come here asking for carry it's really hard to beat for the population at large and if a few of you don't like it well too bad for you the rest of us will eat them all uh, the carry has a very thin skin no fiber uh, very smooth texture, sweet. If you wait till it's fully ripe, it's only sweet and spicy. I like it best. Well, it's a little bit firm yet and has some tartness mixed in with the sweet and spice. And again, I eat the skin of that one. And you hardly notice it because the skin is so thin. It's early season, but in recent years we've often found multiple crops on the trees because the branches tend to bloom at different times, and so the fruit ripens up in different months of the summer. Now this is Cary. At this location near the coast, Cary is usually put on a decent crop uh, inland. Uh, sometimes, sometimes not. Yeah, you can see the early bloom crop here and the late bloom crop up there. Since carries bruise very easily due to having no fiber and a very thin skin, the more you can have within hand picking reach, the better. Also, at least for my eyes, since I have color perception problems, uh, I like to look at them very close up. If I pick them with a picker, I'm kind of just guessing whether or not they're ready to pick, and I always get some too soon. So if you can keep your carry trees short, that really helps. Well, great. Thanks very much.